Um, could you tell me a little bit about your typical working day? Right, um, yeah, it starts normally bright and early, about quarter to seven. Uh, I start riding at quarter to eight. We normally let the horses get fed, which is 7.30, mm -hmm. because to try and tackle a horse up while the others are getting fed is a nightmare. So yeah. I start riding at quarter to eight. Normally ride through till about one, so that's a mixture of myself riding and training. We've got pupils on the yard as well. I normally ride between four and six horses a day, as well as training. And then the afternoons can be anything from training, looking at horses, maintenance jobs around the yard, going off to shows, doing the lorries, yep. these sort of things. So it's um, they're fairly, fairly hectic and then the phone starts to normally ring around about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night, <laughs> right through, through to about 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night. And then after that time, that's when I turn the phone on. <laughs> and I'm again. normally in bed about at 10.30 to Yeah, ready to start again the next day. Something like that, yeah. seven days a week. <laughs> what do you think is the favourite part of uh, your... Working, working life. Uh, the favourite part of my working life, I must say, doing the shows. I enjoy the shows. Still enjoy doing the shows. Um, obviously, winning, yeah. winning is, is, is a major bit of what we do. Yeah. Uh, producing horses through, riding some nice young horses as well. I'm getting a lot of pleasure out of that because that's something where there's less pressure that way. You know, when you jump the bigger horse in the bigger competitions, there's pressure. It's all about money won. It's all about the result on that day yeah. and when you're riding novice horses it's a lot more about producing towards the future and that's uh, that's very very uh, satisfying. Mm -hmm. And what do you think is your least favourite part? The least favourite part I'm afraid is all the administration, the, the form filling out yeah. of, the, uh, the general ligging about sort of on the phone, this type of, of organisation. So luckily Laura does a lot of that for me and I still to this day can't drive a computer because if I did I think that would again just just get me more and more into that. I'm a, I'm a hands-on person. I like riding, I like doing things around the yard. I don't like filling out forms. I don't like sitting on yeah. the telephone um, waiting for people to answer the, the damn thing and uh, <laughs> I'm very impatient in that side of it. <laughs> Understandably so when you've got so much, uh, so many other things to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so you talked a little bit about your young horses, so do you have one that you think we should look out for in the future? Yeah, I've got, I've got a few nice ones, but I've got one at the moment which I really think the world of. He's six year old, he's called the Toy Maker. Um, he's by Casal, um, Rolf Warren begs the price Casal at the moment, and he's very, very, very good. Um, he's, for me, probably the most exciting young horse that I've had since, uh, since, um, Colato, so uh, I think he's really destined for big things. And, and my biggest problem is he's only six, mm. and I don't want to rush him. Yeah. So I end up having to sort of stay back off it because otherwise I just keep jumping in bigger and bigger competitions. But I think he's, I think he's a top horse. I'm gonna be looking out for him then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you could have any horse on the circuit at the moment, which horse do you think it would be? At the moment. Right, I would say that Hickstead is still winning everything, but I think that's coming towards the end of his end of his career. To be frank, um, he's looking, uh, yeah, a little bit tired, and he's done a lot, a lot of events. Uh, yeah, I'm sort of waffling a little bit because I'm not quite sure. I think Nick Scanlon's got a very good horse called Big Star, mm. and that looks a real top horse, yeah. uh, young horse, and I think that's going to be perfect for the Olympic Games. In London 2012, um, yeah, I suppose if any, that would be the one. What's the best advice you've ever been given? The best advice I ever ever were given was by um, by an old dealer guy, and he used to say, "There's no such word as can't you will you won't," mm. and uh, and it's something that I've always remembered that, that that you know at the end of the day you've got to persevere, you've got to keep going, you've you've got to not make excuses, you've got to try and just do do your best, and if that doesn't work, then so mm. be it, but keep going. Um, what would be your advice for a young rider looking to kind of move up? I think the one thing you've got to do is you've got to get yourself two or three things, but the one thing you've got to do is you've got to get yourself some professional uh, experience, whether that be working alongside of professionals. But also I think just the actual uh, being involved in a professional setup is so different mm. to, to normal things. See, that's what I mean about the phone. Yes. Forever <laughs> ringing, you say. Um, but no, it's... Um, it's it's that sort of thing. Getting getting involved in a professional setup as early as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, what we've got a little bit in this this country, a lot of people going out and getting qualifications. Yes. 
and equine qualifications are a massive big thing of it. But the truth of it is that when they come out of college, they still haven't got any professional experience in a professional <laughs> And to a certain extent, we've still we've almost got to retrain, them. and that's, yeah. that's that's a failing. We've got to have people yeah. that are coming out of the universities and of out of the um, equine colleges that are actually fit for purpose. Mm. So it's a little bit of my soapbox there. Yes. That we've got to get these people that are, are coming out with these qualifications that are that are actually you know capable of working on a professional yard. Yeah, having transferable skills. Yeah. Transferable skills, but skills that are useful mm. within the practical environment of a professional establishment, not a sterile environment of a classroom. Yeah. Mm. Um, and finally, um, what what kind of qualities do you look for in a young horse? If, you're, if you were giving advice to somebody looking for a young horse to bring on themselves, mm -hmm. um, what kind of things do you look for? There's two or three different things and, and two or three different aspects you've got to get. The first thing is, when you look at the horse, is he fit for purpose? Does he does he look correct? Is he, you know, shape-wise? Is he uh, athletic in his shape? Things like that. You've got to imagine that if a, if a horse's great-grandfather was pulling a milk float, the chances are of him being a top show jumper are pretty remote. Yeah. And I know that people might say about certain horses, yeah, but they're always the freaks of, yeah. of the job mm -hmm. and not one as a, as a general rule. So it's, it's really, from a point of view, confirmation is really important from the athletic yeah. um, demise of the horse, as it were. And then just little things when you're working with him. Does he seem to pick things up? Does he accept you when you work around his stable? Does he look at you uh, welcoming you into his stable or, or does he sort of put his ears back and not welcome you? Mm. Um, when you're just messing him about, is he... Uh, does he does he allow you to move him from side to side and things like this? In yep. other words, uh, is he basically compliant to what you want him to mm -hmm. do? And then when you actually start to ride him, first thing to, you can always do is trainability. Yep. In other words, if he makes a mistake, does he learn from it? Mm -hmm. uh, when he he does something, does he pick it up? Pretty. If you're asking him to do something, does he pick it up uh, fairly straightforward, or is it always a battle? Mm -hmm. And again, these sort of little things, if you tick all those boxes, invariably, whatever ability they've got, mm. they will always be nice horses because of those yep. certain aspects. Okay, well that's great, thank you very much. It's a pleasure. <laughs>